Hey friends and welcome to a homesteading hustle. Today I'm going to share with you our five must-haves for our garden every year and five things that we probably won't try. It. So our number five is strawberries. Last year was the first year we successfully did strawberries and so we've only had one year so far to base it off. But just from that short experience we know that strawberries will always be in our garden. We found it fairly easy to grow and it was so fun to be able to come out and see just a beautiful ripe strawberry overnight and they're so flavorful. It is amazing how much better fruit and vegetables can be when you grow them in your own garden. And not only do they taste better, you just have more of an appreciation for what it is. So when you go and buy a package of strawberries at the store and you let them sit in your fridge for a week and then they get all moldy, you know, that's we, we didn't see where they come from. So it's a totally disconnect from the product itself. Growing them in your own garden is definitely a must. That brings us to our number four, cucumbers. My husband pickles our cucumbers. Now I've done pickles like once and then once he started doing it, I don't even try anymore because his are so good. People rave about them and they're just his thing. And we love them too. He does bread and butter and dill and he does them in a bunch of different shapes and they're just super delicious. So pickling cucumbers is always great. Along with slicer cucumbers, I do have a daughter who is a bit obsessed with cucumbers and she could eat slicers every day for every meal and that is definitely an always must have in our garden. Also, cucumbers are actually fairly easy to grow. They germinate really fast. And as long as you don't do a ton of messing with their roots, they do a really great job. Now we are Minnesota, so we do start our cucumbers indoors because we want them to have a nice long season. So we do transplant them. We have to be extra careful, but we will direct sow in the ground as well when it's after the last frost. So uh, cucumbers, definitely a go-to for most gardens around here. Now our number three spot, is taken by carrots. Now, I've never pickled or canned carrots and neither has my husband, but kids love carrots and carrots are great for long-term storage. And if you do any kind of pantry prepping or um, yeah, long-term storage, root cellar type storage, root vegetables are going to be the way to go. Carrots are gonna be a great commodity there. You come in all different shapes and sizes and colors and I shouldn't say shapes, I mean, they're all kind of triangular, right? But you know, they're different colors and different varieties and they have a different, a different, um, they have different sweetness to them. So carrots are a good one. Although we haven't done any long-term storage with carrots yet, they are a great one to stay all winter long in your fridge or you can store them in sand. There are so many different varieties of carrots. We haven't done any of the really crazy long ones or even colored ones. We've done kind of some basic, let's just let this guy do it because he knows more about it too. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it is cold and windy today. Now I'm gonna hook you up with our number two. And let's give it to sugar snap peas. And not only are sugar snap peas just beautiful because they have the beautiful little blooms, they're vertical climbers, and so you can do them on a trellis. Um, and they are just, they're really fun to see grow, but they are fun to pick, fresh, when you have the kiddos out in the garden. And uh, they're actually something that the kiddos like. Now. I don't know about you, but we have three kiddos and well, one of them, she's so little, she hasn't tested the garden stuff yet, but we have kind of picky ears and peas, sugar snap peas, they're sweet, they're crunchy. And if you pick them at just the right time, they're just really delicious. And you can do so many things with them, throw them in lots of recipes. I don't know anything about canning them, but they're really easy to seed harvest from, which is great because obviously you just, the seed is the pea itself. And so at the end of the season, when the plant dries up and the seed, the pea inside gets all shrivelly, that's your seed for next year. Like you want to do long-term seed storage harvesting, peas are going to be a really great one for your family. Another thing about sugar snap peas, which I didn't know this, but my husband has been doing a ton of research on soil and what things to grow in which spots to add different nutrients back into the soil. And he said that peas will add nitrogen back into the soil, which is great for a lot of plants that are um, that desire that high nitrogen soil. So there's a little a little tip for you to put in your back pocket. I'm gonna give that number one spot to potatoes. Now potatoes are a not only they're an easy plant to grow. You put them in early, but they're beautiful, fairly easy to manage. They're fun to dig up dig up at the end of the harvest. And my husband's Irish, so 
if we didn't grow potatoes, that would just, that'd be a travesty. He will eat them in any form, in any way, shape. It doesn't matter. Um, any variety. We've done baby reds and we've done, um, ooh, what's the other one? I can't think of the other one. I can put it on the screen. Um, but he has actually dehydrated potatoes before where he slices them really thin and it almost like, um, like you make a scallop potato and he dehydrates them in our dehydrator and just stores them in a mason jar. And they, I don't remember the shelf storage on that, but that's a long-term shelf storage idea. So when it comes to, I mean, obviously potatoes, they're gonna be a low acid vegetable. And so you do need to pressure can those. But if you want to do it without a pressure canner, you gotta dehydrate it and you're gonna have potatoes for years. It's gonna be a great long-term storage thing. So. Potatoes are definitely and always must have. Now potatoes do, oh, we have a dog loose. Rosie, Rosie, Rosie come. Go girl, go girl, Rosie, go girl. Go girl, Rosie, go girl. Go girl, Rosie. Thank you. Yeah, a loose dog, you know. What happens? She might kill a chicken. You know, we're just gonna. Be careful with that. Don't forget to subscribe <laughs> and like. Do that. Do that. That would be good. <laughs> I don't know why he's wearing shorts, pajama shorts, and boots. It is chilly out here. I don't know what he's thinking, but that's kids for you. <laughs> she came right to me though. She didn't. She listened. Oh, well, not now. All right. Now that we've contained that situation. I think I've said everything about potatoes that I wanted to because they're a number one must-have crop. I mean, who doesn't love potatoes, right? Fries, you can saute them, can them, hash browns, breakfast potatoes, mashed potatoes, rosemary potatoes. I don't know. You can do all kinds of things with potatoes. <laughs> I feel like it's a bubble gum situation. All right, so now that I've given you our must-haves, let me hook you up with a couple. Probably we won't grow again. Um, and I'm just gonna go straight for it. <sighs> this one's embarrassing. Eggplant. So it was actually fairly easy to grow. My husband put in a handful of plants for me because I requested it. I've cooked with eggplant maybe once ever. And it was a really yummy recipe. And I was like, you know, if we grow some eggplant, we will make that all the time. Well, I didn't make it once. And even worse, I didn't do anything with any of the eggplants. And we had seriously an extensive amount of eggplants that came out of those plants. And I let them all go to waste. So embarrassing. You can hate me now. I know. Gardeners all around the world are going to be like, what a disgrace to gardening. You let the whole yield go to waste. Well, that happen. That's real life. So we probably won't grow eggplant again. And if we did, I would maybe grow like one plant, uh, not five. They are super beautiful though. I don't know if you've ever seen an eggplant flower, but they're really pretty. Um, the ones, the variety that we grew, I think they're black beauties. And the flower on it was like a really light purpley white. And um, it was just really beautiful and really unique flower. So it's definitely beautiful. It worked really well. They were pretty easy, but I just didn't use them. And unfortunately, that's just the reality of it. So, if you eat eggplant, go ahead and grow. If you don't, well, that's not going to be in our garden. Also, the eggplant, <laughs> because I wasted, I'm not joking, like 30, maybe more eggplants. They sat on our counter for a while. We were wondering why we got this random smell of like an electrical burn and we realized that that's what eggplants smell like when they're old they smell like an electrical burn and it was really gross even the chickens didn't like them so there's that we have on our property to grow is gonna be corn now we love a good sweet corn the problem is we just don't have a ton of space for a large crop of corn. And
and I feel like you need a decent amount of space to grow a decent amount for the fruit, not the fruit, I mean the fruit of the plant, but for the corn to become tasty enough to harvest for food. Now we could definitely grow it for, you know, a chicken scratch feed or if we were going to do corn grain for our animals, which we're leaning away from grain, but that's a whole other video. Um, we would definitely, we could grow it for that, but it's so cheap to just buy it at the corner stands. Everybody grows corn and you can buy it for, you know, I don't remember what it is. I mean, 10 for two bucks at the corner stand and we'll just go support a leather, a local farmer for corn. I don't think we really need to be growing it. And if we do, maybe I'll just grow a small little bunch of them so that I can have some stocks for some fall decor, something like that. Easy peasy. Really honestly, when it comes to not growing things, we are so open to just trying different things that we haven't had a ton of experiences where we just really won't grow something again. You know, so those two things that I just listed are kind of the first things that come to our mind. And I don't know, I'm willing to try anything again, even if it's something we haven't done very well in the past. Now being in Minnesota, we do have a shorter growing season, so there's certain things that need to have longer time to ripen, like this is used watermelon as an example. If you're down south in a southern climate, it's warmer, longer, you have a longer growing season, you're going to have much better success with getting your fruit to fully bring out its sugar to get the right medicine. Now, we just have not had the greatest luck with watermelon, but we will my hair continue to try and again when it comes to even just collecting seeds from these things I think there's benefits in trying things over and over and learning from mistakes and collecting those seeds seed storage is going to be huge for long term if you do any kind of pantry storage or long term seed harvesting you know that's going to be huge instead of three more things that we won't grow, I'll give you three things that we're going to try that we've never grown before. And one of those is going to be like a wheat grass or a rye grass, some kind, some kind of a wheat harvest. Now we do have some seeds for some rye and a few other different types of, um, of grains. We're going to try those. Those are going to be next on our list of, of to-dos. We also are going to continue to add to our root vegetables. So um, my husband just told me, which again, I didn't know this, um, that, was it rutabaga? No, not rutabaga. I don't even know. I don't think I've ever had those. Turnips. He just told me that turnips, I think he said turnips are good for the soil, which I don't think I've ever even eaten a turnip. Are those like carrots? They look like white carrots, maybe? They look like white carrots? I think those are turnips. So, <laughs> that sounds silly from a, a gardener perspective, I'm sure. But we're learning, you know? Um, we also really want to have a bunch of sunflowers. Now, we have done sunflowers in the past, and they're really beautiful and really fun to harvest the sunflower seeds from. And they're just great to have as a backup for chicken feed and chicken treats. You know, I mean, anything, if you have chickens, if you're a homesteader, anything that you can grow that can provide for not only your family, but for your animals. So what can you grow that can double as chicken feed or, or whatnot? Um, just waving to a neighbor over there. So there's our two cents on the five must-haves in your garden, or in our garden at least and a couple things that we definitely won't grow or won't grow much of and a few things that we want to try so let us know down below if any of these items are things that you love to grow dislike to grow have had good experiences with bad experiences with and have you ever wasted an entire crop like i have like that's really embarrassing but i can't be the only one right let me know in the comments below if says hi and so does that <laughs> All right, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. You have something to say, Rusev?